Morning boys and girls, it's Miss Mia and Mrs. Gail. And today we are going to be talking to you about fractions. Um, bit more fractions. So um, if we go, oh thanks Miss Bell, she's just in the background. She's just there. in the background. <laughs> okay, so we've got an LO here, so let's read this. LO. To, to subtract, subtract proper, proper fractions, fractions from, from a mixed, mixed number. number. So here we go, we've got an example question here, question 35 in the arithmetic paper. It's one and one quarter minus one third equals. So it's important at this point here to identify well, what does what is a proper fraction and what is a mixed number? So a proper fraction, if you watched the previous video on uh, the fractions with me, uh, you'll know that a proper fraction is a fraction where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So in this instance, the proper fraction is one third. And a mixed number is where you've got a whole number, such as one, two, three, four, and so forth. Or an integer. Or an integer, which is also a whole number, um, with a proper fraction. So our mixed number here is one, there's our whole number, and our proper fraction is one quarter. So our mixed number here is one and one quarter, and our proper fraction is one third. So that's what we're looking at today. For those of you that will extend it a little bit more, you'll be look looking at subtracting two mixed numbers together. So... Notice here it's revision time, it's nothing new, so we will have practiced all this skill, so it's just a case of revising. Okay, let's have a look at this question. We've got one and one quarter minus, or subtract, one third. Before I do anything, we've got this mixed number here that must be converted into an improper fraction. So an improper fraction is where the numerator is larger than the denominator. So in order to do that, I need to do... 4 times 1 plus the 1. And I'll just write that out here. I do 4 times 1 plus the 1, which gives me 5. So that 5 must go on my numerator. 5 over, keep the denominator the same, which is 4. Subtract, we keep that proper fraction, 1 third. That's the first step. The second step is, because my denominators are both different, I need to find the lowest common denominator before I can subtract anything. So I rewrite my fraction underneath and I look at my denominators, which are 4 and 3. And my lowest common denominator is 12. And I know that because if I write my multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, then 3, 6, 9, 12. You can see here, 12 is a common multiple of both 4 and 3. So that's it's my a really good common. strategy as well, Mrs. Mm. Bell. Now, some of you will can, can see like later on, if you carried on, you could also see that there might be some other numbers that are in both of those um, multiples of 4 and 3, but actually want one the lowest common denominator, it's easier. So, pop in 12 there for your denominator, and the next part here is calculating the numerator. So I'm going to do a different colour for this. So I see here, how many 4s go to 12? Well, it's 4 times 3. Whatever I do to the numerator, denominator, sorry, I must do to the numerator. So 5 times 3 gives me 15. I then do, how many 3s go to 12? Which is 4. So 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 1 gives me 4. Okay. Now I can subtract. My denominator stays the same, which is 12, and I subtract the numerator. So 15 minus 4 gives me 11. And actually, is that, can that be reduced anymore? No, it can't. Is it a proper fraction? Yes, it is. So actually, I don't need to do any converting back to a mixed number. So my final answer for 1 and 1 quarter minus 1 third is 11 over 12. So there's quite a few steps to that. You've got to convert your mixed number, find the lowest common denominator, and then once you've got that, you can then subtract. Let's have a look at a step further, because actually some of you, when you start the task, will want to look at how do you do maybe a mixed number subtract another mixed number. So this is where Miss Mia <laughs> is going to have a go. Oh. Yeah, we'll just leave the spot over here. So this question, we've got four and two thirds, subtract one and three sevenths. So we've got two mixed numbers here. So Mrs. Gale, you're really good at using this like this. Because I'm, I'm not very... I always use that. No, I just always... No. Anyway, like Mrs. Gale said, step one, we need to convert both of these into an improper fraction. So we do four times three, which is 12. 12 add the two, which is 14. So that will become 14 thirds. Subtract. And then one times seven is seven. Add the 3 is 10 sevenths. Now, that's step 1. So step 2, we need to find the lowest common denominator. I'm not going to write out my multiples because I already know that the common multiple for 3 and 7 is 21. Um, a top tip, it doesn't always give you the lowest common multiple or denominator, sorry. You can always multiply the two denominators together to give you a common denominator. So 21 and 21 here, oops. 
keep track. So 3 times 7 is 21, so I'll need to have to do 14 times 7. Now I can't do that in my head, so I'm going to use short multiplication, and that's okay. Use all your previous knowledge to help you answer the question. So 14 multiplied by 7, I know that 7 times 4 is 28. 1 times 7 is 7, add the 2 is 9, so that's 98. Thank you, Mrs. Gay, for this question. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and then the same with the other one. So 7 times 3 gives us 21, so I need to do 10 times 3, which is 30. So now that we've got a common denominator, we can now carry out the calculation. So we know that the denominator stays the same. 98 take away 30, Mrs. Gale, what do you reckon? It's 68. I think she's correct, boys and girls. So we know that the answer to this question is 68 over 21. Now this is an improper fraction. So the numerator is larger than the denominator. So we need to convert this back into a mixed fraction. Or a mixed number. So Mrs. go. take it away. Okay, so hopefully um, what would be useful at this point here is if you haven't seen my video already on long division, I would have a little look at that because I'm going to use some of those, well I am going to use those strategies. So, mathematically 68 over 21 actually means 68 divided by 21 and that's what that fraction line actually means. So what I would do for this part here is we would have here 68 divided by 21. Now for some students they're going to be able to do short division and they're going to be able to see that and calculate it accurately and it is that accuracy that we want to see in maths. However some students won't see that and we'll need to write some of their multiples of 21 down to the side here. So I'll just show you a few tips how to do that. So 1 times 21 we know would be 21. Miss Mia how do you get 2 times 21? I would just double 21 which is 42. Okay. 3 times 21 you just add 21 to 42 which is 63, mm -hmm. and we'll just do 4 times 21 just for bounce, which is 84, so we just double the 2 times. Okay, now some of you might realise at this point here, you probably wouldn't have needed to do the 4 times 21, because actually you only seen how many 21s to go into 68, and actually you can already see that's 63 here. However, some students will just need to do that next pr next step. So the next part is, okay, how many 21s go into 6? 0, carry the 6 over, or some of you would just look at that as 68. How many 21s go into 68? So we know it's 1, 2, 3. 3 times, because that's 63 here, and what is 3 times 21? It's 63, and we write that directly underneath the 68. Now, we subtract here, so 8 minus 3 gives us 5, 6 minus 6 gives us nothing, there's nothing to bring down here, so this is my remainder. So my final answer is 3, remainder, 5. Now I've got this information, I can then convert it back into a mixed number. Let me take over from here, Mrs. Gale. So we know that the answer is three remainder five. So can you bring it up a bit more, yeah. please? Yeah. Thank you. That's a long quite calculation. High. So just leave it there. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So we know that this means the following. So it's three holes, so equals three holes, and we need to write the remainder as a fraction. So we know that the denominator is going to be 21, the numerator is going to be 5, so it'll be 5 over 21. And you can see here the 21 is your divisor, and that's what it's called, so what you're dividing by. So if we take it right to the top, Mrs. Gale, so we know that 4 and 2 thirds subtract 1 and 3 sevenths is 3 wholes and 5 twenty. Now some of you may be looking at that thinking, could you not just do the 4 minus 1 and then find the common denominator? You can do that with some of the questions in subtraction, however, it doesn't always work. So it's a really good strategy to actually find that improper fraction and then work from there because it won't always work with subtracting fractions. And you've got all the time in the world, boys and girls, let's be honest. <laughs> right. So at this point here, what we do is we've got a range of questions for you to have a go at. I want you to have a go at writing out the calculation. If you can't remember the steps, go back in the video and have a look what myself and Miss Mia did. We're just going to flip the camera, boys and girls, just so you can see it. Sorry, ignore my face. No, I can't flip the camera. So have a look. That's perfect. Just so you know at this point here, questions 1 to 4, you're looking at subtracting the mixed number from a proper fraction. Questions 5 to 8, you're looking at subtracting two mixed numbers. Okay, so have a go at them, pause the video at this point, and then we can self-assess afterwards. Give yourself about 10 to 15 minutes. If you need longer, give yourself longer. If you need to go back in the video, just to go through the steps, go back in the video and look at the steps. 
Okay. So, okay. So once you've completed this, it's important to self-assess here to see whether you've got them accurate. Now, before I reveal the answers, it's important to note, note at this point that the answers are in their simplest form. So if you get a slightly different fraction, you may well have to simplify it into its simplest form. Okay. So the first one is one and three quarters or seven quarters. Do you want to read out the question, Mrs. Gowell, and then yeah. the answers? Two and one, two and a half minus three quarters is one and three quarters, or they would have had, would have allowed seven quarters. Not always the same though. Question two, one and one fifteenth minus two fifths gives us two thirds in its simplest form. One and one seventh minus three sevenths is five sevenths. Yep. And you can see here, this is really important why you need to convert that improper fraction, because you can't just do one minus nothing, because you'll notice here, there's no mixed number there. Two and one eighth minus a quarter gives us one and seven eighths. Now we'll move on to the multi um, subtracting two mixed numbers. Three and five sixths minus one and one sixth gives us two and four sixths, or two and two thirds in the simplest form. Question six, four and two thirds minus one and six sevenths gives us two and 17 over 21 or 59, 21. So they'd accept the improper fraction here, but they don't always accept it. So it's always good to convert it back if you can. Okay, question seven here, six and one sixth minus two and one seventh is four and one forty two. And question eight is three and seven eighths minus one and one half gives us two and three eighths. Okay, so if you made a mistake at any point, go back, have a look at your calculations, and hopefully this has been a good um, unit just to revise subtracting fractions. Okay, over All and right. out. Bye.